So, today uh, we've got Mark Whitney here from Hasselblad in the UK, and uh, he's going to tell us about the Hasselblad range of digital cameras. So, Mark, what's, what's it all about? Right, yes, thank you, Richard. Um, so, this is the H5D. It's our latest generation of professional camera. Uh, so we obviously started with the H1 when things st uh, first started going digital and through H2, H3, H4 and now on the H5. Mm. Um, so there's different megapixel variants, entry level being 40 megapixel, um, 50 megapixel um, in the CMOS sensor which this one is here. Okay. And then we also do a 60 megapixel and then we also do a few other little uh, variants, our multi-shot cameras which are based on the 50 megapixel um, option and they're used for still life um, and the sensor moves and I can talk about that in more detail later. Great, okay, so um, we'll, we'll sort of uh, get the impression of that is that they are you know, fantastic cameras and uh, you know, but, but maybe you're going to pay a, a fortune for them, I mean is, it, is that the case? Um, it has been in the past but um, it's not really the case nowadays, okay. um, the price is a bit of a misconception in, in the industry. Um, obviously, you don't just have to own the camera, you could also lease it or rent it. Uh, so a lot of people, they, they get into medium format by renting it per job. Um, you know, budget it into the quote, get the client to pay for it as part of the shoot. Um, and then, obviously, once you get to a certain level, if you're renting it X amount of times a month, you then know it's going to be worthwhile investing it in your own business. Okay. Um, so, yeah, the, the entry level price is roughly around about £8,000 for the 40 megapixel in today's prices. Um, that's quite a surprise to most people. Yeah, I mean, I, I think um, of these as being, you know, thirty, forty thousand £40,000 plus. Yes. So, um, yeah. Yes. Um, so yeah, so the 40 megapixel under ten thousand um, pounds uh, as an entry level. We do have the sort of top end cameras that are the scary prices that some people know of. Okay. Um, but then you know the, the idea is that the camera is a tool and it pays for itself. Okay, so cool. you know the idea is it makes you money and doesn't just uh, deplete your bank account when you buy it. And it's not just for. Holiday snaps and uh, and um, the the festive season is it so yeah okay no cool. no a lot of uh, top end studios will use something like this um, not only for the quality but also for the perception as well if you walk into a studio with a medium format you know regardless of how good a photographer you are you just have that perception of being a good photographer yeah, just for the kit you use yeah yes. I mean I, I think certainly in my case the better the camera the better my photographs are even if I, I can't really take photos myself you know so yeah. you, you've got another range of this this is the H system you've also got the V system yeah the right? V system is probably what Hasselblad's sort of probably uh, most well known for it's like our, our iconic camera okay um, that the actual bodies are sort of discontinued a few years ago but uh, we still do a digital back a brand new digital back which fits on the back of all those old cameras um, straight out of the box with no wires and the idea is that the new back has got the 50 megapixel CMOS chip which is exactly the same as this H, H camera here so the idea is you can get the same raw file now out of both systems obviously the front end changes your lenses and, and your bodies um, but the actual raw data that you're capturing on that sensor it's the same. Okay, so cool. both uh, technologies are sort of aligned. Great. What's, what's the difference between this and, say, a 35mm? Why would I um, look at this camera? Okay, basically it's a larger format. So that generally means more quality, um, exaggerated depth of field. Um, this uses the 50 megapixel CMOS sensor. Okay. Um, so the CMOS um, has been... Um, so in the past, it's medium format generally been CCD sensors, um, which have their own characteristics, mainly centered around the quality. Uh, but the trade-off of that is they can be a little bit slower than um, sort of the 35mm equivalents. Okay. Um, so the CMOS sort of brings it more in line with the 35mm because the quality of the CMOS now has caught up the CCD pretty much. Um, but because it's a faster chip, we're able to do a little bit more with it, um, mainly the ISO sensitivity. So this camera here will go up to 6400 ISO. Um, with very minimal noise. Uh, also, because of the speed at which we can get data off the chip, we're able to do live view as well. So you can actually open a shutter and get um, a live view on the screen of what the camera's actually looking at, which we've never been able to do in the past. Okay, right, mm -hmm. okay. Cool. And, I mean, the, the whole sort of 35mm side sort of things, presumably you can use, is it better quality lenses on this and so on? And um, because of the larger format, generally, yes. Uh, the Hasselblad lenses are regarded to be very good. Yeah. Um, 
a lot of people think it's about the megapixels. Generally, the megapixel count of medium format is higher, um, but that's not you know, necessarily to say that the quality is all about the megapixel. Yes, it will allow you to print quite big and to be able to crop in for detail, um, but it's, it's what the, the, the megapixels capture, really. So this has got 14 and a half stops of dynamic range, so the real differences between your, your highlights and your shadows is a lot wider than of a general 35mm format camera. Uh, the colours are also a lot truer. This is 16-bit, um, so again, colours are a lot richer and, and more sort of real life, um, especially skin tones. Uh, skin tones are always uh, regarded to be very accurate and very smooth on the Hasbro medium format. Okay, cool. And easy to use? I mean, is it any different from using um, other types of camera? Uh, people uh, can think that, but that's not the case. Um, the, the look of the camera obviously is a bit alien to some people that might not have used it before. It just looks like a little bit different in the way you hold it. But it's actually very easy to use. Um, there's probably only three or four things on the camera you need to set before you start using it. Um, if you're shooting manually, it's the aperture, your shutter speed, and your ISO. Um, you could argue the white balance as well, but because you're using a raw file, you can always change that in the software later. Sure. Um, there's no real um, sort of fancy um, modes or options that you need to, to select before you start using it. So it's just a case of picking it up, uh, setting those three or four things and shooting. Cool. Cost-wise, I mean, obviously, it looks expensive, but that's probably a good thing, isn't it? Um, well, it's expensive to make, hence the cost of, um, you know, the, the high street cost, but... Um, what, yeah, would, the, what would it be, cost-wise? Well, the entry level, round about um, £8,000 for the 40 megapixel. Okay. Uh, this model here is the 50 megapixel uh, CMOS, so the body only for this is around about 18500 so there is a bit of a step up. Um, but, you know, you get what you pay for, I guess. Um, mm. You don't expect a Ferrari to be cheap yeah, sure. um, you know what it stands for the brand yeah. and, and what it does and how it differs um, and it's the same with this really yeah I mean I, I know you've mentioned in the past uh, true focus is a feature within this camera that's unique to yourself yeah so it's, it's designed in house by Hasselblad and it solves a problem with regards into uh, changing the plane of focus when you're composing a shot so we only use the center point of the viewfinder and the reason why we don't have a multi-point is because of the larger format of the sensor. Um, so Hasselblad and a lot of our competitors only use the center point on medium format. And the disadvantage is, only by using the center point, is that if you lock focus using that center point and then recompose, you're actually changing the plane of focus. Okay. So if I was to focus on someone's eyes, then tilt the camera down for more of a three-quarter shot, the focus actually moves away from the eyes and nearer towards the ear, potentially. Mm -hmm. um, and that's obviously exaggerated by the shallow depth of fields of the lens. Um, so what True Focus does, there's... Um, sort of gyroscopic sensors inside the camera body and once you've locked focus the camera then measures movement so it measures the tilt and swivel of the camera and then when you take the shot it makes a correction to the focus if it's needed to get in focus what you originally wanted in focus okay cool so this has got the CMOS sensor in yeah it has yes uh, I don't understand differences in sensors. What, what, what is um, but the best way, um, we, we relate it to cars a little bit to help people understand. So it's like having a petrol engine and a diesel engine. Right. So in the past, um, we've used what we call CCD uh, sensors, which you could liken to, say, petrol, and now CMOS, which is the diesel. Um, so basically what we're trying to say is that they do the same thing. So they both capture light and, and create a digital image, digital right. image. but um, there's different ways of doing it. So like um, an engine will both, the, you know, diesel and petrol will both propel a car forward, mm -hmm. but the diesel um, generally does more miles to the gallon and all that sort of lower emissions and things like that. Um, so it's just different ways of doing it and the pros and cons. So the CCD was generally all about quality. Uh, the CMOS is more about a little bit more flexibility and faster in terms of the, the speeds it works at. So we're now using the CMOS sensor in the medium format um, world, which enables us to get higher ISO values. Uh, we can go up to 6400 ISO on this camera and um, it enables us to do more uh, captures per minute uh, 1.5 uh, a second this will do uh, up to 50 in a minute and also live view um, the speed of the sensor in which it can drain off the data uh, enables us to do live view which has a few advantages so, so what's that then? <clears throat> well basically um, 
you can now see what the camera sees on the screen and you can use that to focus. Um, not always an advantage for every type of photographer, but where it would really come into its own is, say, if you use the Hasselblad, the Hasselblad back onto a technical camera, like a Linoff or a Sino or an Alpa. Um, in, in previously, you would have to focus it using a slider, um, but now you can put this directly onto the camera and actually focus it using the screen, uh, which saves a lot of time and increases the accuracy. Okay, so what about multi-shot? I mean, that's something you've, I've heard you mention as well. Right? That, again, yep. is that, that's more technical, is it? Or? It is, yeah. So it's a, a different version of our H5D. Okay. And what it is, it's got an extra sort of inch or so on this back end of the camera. Mm -hmm. And inside there, we've got a sort of a piezo electromechanical device. And what that does is it actually moves the Bayer mosaic over the top of the sensor. Um, for multiple exposure. So you'd only ever use it really for still life. Okay. Um, but in fact, you can only use it for still life. Any movement whatsoever, the camera would throw up an error to say that there was some sort of inconsistency there. So the idea is that the, the Bayer Mosaic, if you take four tiles um, that go over the, the pixels, you'd have two green, one blue, one red, which tries to sort of emulate how a human eye would see colours. And the idea is that for each of the four shots, that Bayer Mosaic moves over the top of the sensor and it enables each pixel to be exposed to each of the different colour tiles on the mosaic. So that gives a much greater accuracy on terms of colours, much truer, and it enables us to increase the sharpness and okay. the, the clarity of the, sh of the image as well. So that's the normal four shot. Uh, we also have what we call a six shot. Um, which is the same as the four shot, so it, again it moves the, the sensor and the, pic and the, the bare mosaic by one pixel, um, but it does two extra shots, and with those two extra shots it actually uses those to increase the, the size to an effective 200 megapixel. Um, so a lot of museums, um, you know, product photographers would use that as a way of getting better colour accuracy and um, you know, just improving the general quality of the shots. Okay. Um, so as I say, museums where they would take um, pictures of the paintings in order to replicate them and to archive them. Um, in the greatest of quality. And you end up with one file, though? Yes. Must be pretty big, I'm guessing. Uh, the 50, the, like the, four, the 50 megapixel four shot is still pretty much a 50 megapixel file. Okay. So that's quite small, around about sort of 50 to 80 megabytes. But where the, the file size does change is for the 200 megapixel, and the raw file of that is roughly 1.2 gigabytes. Yeah. So uh, that's that's a bit bigger than my camera phone. Yes, so, um, um, and it's a good indication of the amount of data that's included within cool. that file. Oh, yeah. Okay, great. I mean, uh, yeah, absolutely. It certainly yeah. speaks volumes, basically, doesn't it? Yes. I suppose the last question. I, I gather you can use film with some of the range. Is that right? Yeah, we've recently opened the H5D up to take a film back. Okay. And we also do an H5X body, um, which was purely designed to be able to work with third-party backs, including film. And so the H5D system has really opened up in recent months, um, enables people to use just the Hasselblad body in the lens if they so wish, um, but you know, also use the H5D as an optimised camera. Cool, great. Well, thanks, Mark. That's, that's been super. It certainly, you know, it really does uh, open up the doors on you know what's going on with Hasselblad, and, and you know, certainly gives us a bit more reason uh, and understanding of why that's really a top-end camera, basically. So, yeah. thank you very much. Cheers. Thank you. Thanks a lot.